a lot of times people get confused as to what something costs and what it's worth. That's the same thing. Right. So if you don't accept his payment, then you got to pay yourself. Mm. Now, is that uh, is that cost worth it? Here's the other thing. We talked about Solomon and how he tried everything in the world, had access to everything in the world, money, blah, 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 and said vanity of vanity. Fast forward thousands of years to the modern day. Get out of, you know, some people say all oh, that Bible stuff is old. When Steve Jobs ascended to the top of the tech world, yes, or top of the economic world, yes, top of the leadership board, everybody wanted the next quote out of Steve Jobs' lips. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted the bank account Steve Jobs had. Yeah. Everybody wanted the black turtle or whatever he wore like Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. But when he got pancreatic cancer and was on his dying bed, mm -hmm. he said that everything he had accomplished and attained was empty because he, did, because he didn't feel spiritually fulfilled. This, these were his words. Now, I, I paraphrase him, but he wrote that out. Those were his words. But see, the cost, he... To did, get to the end of your life. Exactly. And you've amassed all of this riches and gold. Right, and all money, this wealth. Yeah. And all this um, prestige mm -hmm. and, and noble honor amongst right. your peers. And to be on your deathbed, and that can't save you. And that can't save you. And you, and you feel the emptiness. For, for those of you out there who may be putting off, if you... And if, I don't mean to step on toes, but this has got to be said. You may be putting off coming to Christ while you pursue your career. Mm -hmm. You may be putting it off while you pursue your social life. I'm in college. I'm living. I'm, you know, my life is popping. Really, how fulfilled are you? You're paying a cost one way or another. You may feel good in the moment, in the club, party, and blah, blah, blah. But the next day, when everything's quiet, you can't wait until the next time because you're empty. Yes. So what, what emotional spiritual, psychological cost are you paying and not getting anything out of it? It's not worth it because you're always looking for the next thing. You didn't. You haven't started partying until you started partying with God. Oh my That's gosh. That's what I have to say. But because see, I was out there and I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You wake up the next day, you're like, oh, the, the last day was just a, fate, a, a, a blur. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do next? You need the next thing. Yeah, I, I was never fulfilled until I met God that each, every night, every day was an adventure. Exactly, because now you're not looking for the next thing I have to do. You're looking for the next grace he's going to give me. Mm -hmm. For the What's the next blessing? What's the next mercy? What's the next opportunity he's going to present to me? Mm -hmm. And you get to the point where, for me, I got to the point where I'm like, Lord, what are we going to do today? Exactly. Exactly. And sit back and just say, Lord, what are we going to do today? And there's no price to pay. There's no hangover. There's no... You're free. You're mentally yes. free. The bondage that you had in the life of sin, and I'm, I'm only talking because I've experienced it. The life that you had in the life of sin, the freedom that you have with God, it's... It's uncomparable. Yeah, there, it, the, the world anything. doesn't have anything to offer. Like you just have peace that surpass all understanding. Exactly. The world can't offer you the true lasting joy of knowing that he who created everything loves you and is expressing it towards you every day. Mm -hmm. That's worth it. I promise you. In Philippians 3 and 6, Paul said, but what thing in um, Philippians 3 and 7, I'm sorry said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So again, here we go with that assigning value. He, Paul could have gained status, power, all these things, but he saw that those things weren't worth him doing when he came in contact with Christ. Christ offered him so much more. He offered him so much peace, so much joy, so much satisfaction that the worldly things he could have gained he counted them lost. He chalked it up. I'll pay that price. Here, um, another practical example. I'm in the cars. I had this conversation with Shani. I, I want to get a car. Um, well, not want to, but I'm looking into it. And I started seeing a certain car that initially was worth $85,000 mm. two years ago. 
And I kept seeing these cars popping up for seventeen, sixteen thousand dollars. I'm like, what in the world? So I did I did my research. I didn't go run out and go buy it. So originally it was eighty five thousand dollars. Originally it's eighty five thousand dollars. Two to three years passed, now it's seventeen. With less than fifty thousand miles. I'm like, but now these are great cars. What's wrong with it? It runs, it folks, but you know what? To me, I was seeing the cost. I said, but let me do a little bit more digging to figure out why the worth of the car, the value, mm -hmm. is so cheap. Because I know what it was, was initially. Well, the more digging and digging I did, I figured out that the cost of owning the car was not worth JD, one of the, the websites, we did a study, and that car to keep to maintain over a five year period for average maintenance was thirty five thousand dollars. So in the, in the in the past, in the course of two three years you paid for the car. So if I would have bought the seventeen thousand dollar car, five years later I would have paid for it twice more in maintenance. It's not even though the cost was low, the value wasn't there. It wasn't worth that because of the maintenance. Mm -hmm. You may think that your life in the world doesn't cost you anything. But the value of what you're gaining isn't worth it. It isn't worth the maintenance. How many people need maintenance right now separate from God? They need an anti-anxiety or a depression pill. Mm -hmm. They need um, they need physical you know, intercourse and stuff with people to make them give them value. They need money. They need clothes to give them value. You're, you're, you're high maintenance because you are assigning worth to the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But when you and have... You constantly have to recycle, recycle. Exactly. Recycle something new, right? But when you assign the right worth to your soul, and then you assign the right worth to a relationship with Christ, whatever cost you have is peanuts. It's nothing. I'm not saying it's always easy. But even when it's hard, you know it's worth it. But people have to get to the point where, remember I was telling you, that you have to be, you have to first um, say, hey God. Mm -hmm. I want to be friends with you. Right, right. You have to be introduced. Yeah. Right. And then once you're introduced, you say, you know what? I think I want this relationship to take the next step. Mm -hmm. Friendship. Mm -hmm. This is real. This is real talk. And once you, um, you get that, you start to, your mind starts to take steps to understanding what, what you mean right. to God. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know what you mean to God, none, this stuff that you're telling us no. don't mean nothing. No. But what you meant to him, what you mean to him, is that in all of your mess, with all of your flaws, with all of your troubles, with all of your disobedience, with all of your brokenness, he saw that coming. He saw you in the shape you are right now watching this video. Mm -hmm. Knew you were going to be exactly where you are. And even though the world may not say you're worth anybody, he said, I love you enough to pay the cost. To have you back. And now, I'm going to make a clarification. I'm going to make an explanation here. When I say a, the cost, I'm not talking about adhering to a list of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Because even Paul, that we just read, that he counted all things lost. If you go down two more verses, he said, And be found in him, meaning Christ, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness by which is of God, by faith. What he's saying is, I'm not meaning I'm going to be in Christ and just follow all these rules. Mm -hmm. That I'm going to truly believe in him and have a relationship with him. Right. That this is about me and him walking together, not how you perceive me. So please don't think this is about paying the cost so people perceive you the right way. Mm -hmm. This is about having a relationship with God. Because even when you have a relationship with God, people are not going to be able to see the things that no. God asks you to do. No. They're going to think you're crazy, you're yeah. disobedient. Right. Pushing against the, the grain. Right. But God is telling you to do that thing. Mm -hmm. But they're seeing you as disobedient. Or, or your friends that you used to hang out with, they see you as being brand new. They see you as being mm -hmm. standoffish. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you're too good for us now. Mm -hmm. But when their eyes, let me tell you, when their eyes open and see the things that God did for you, then they be like, they mouth drop. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. That, that was wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. So to sum it all up, Whatever cost is preventing you from coming to Christ, whatever cost that, that you have been paying to the world that has stopped you from ever considering Christ, I promise you it's not, it's not worth you losing out on a relationship with him. 
It's not worth you not uh, having your soul eternally secure in him. Whatever the cost is, Christ is worth it. He's worth it. At least just give him a try. You, just what, give him a try. You, what you going to lose for trying God? You know how when we bought, we, we had to buy a new mattress a couple years ago. And we were just trying, we were just trying stuff. Because guess what? They had like a hundred night free trial. I know, right? <laughs> so you sleep on it. If you don't like it, you take it, you get it back. Yeah. So when I had to pay for the first match, I was like, oh, we'll try it. Because I didn't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. I, with Christ, free trial offer. You got nothing to lose. No. Just come to him mm -hmm. and allow him to start to, to work in you and in your life. Mm -hmm. And it, if you stay there, if you commit to that trial, if you really allow him to build a relationship and you focus on building a relationship with him, you'll look back and say, you know what? The things that I thought were yeah. costing me, mm -hmm. that wasn't worth where I am right now. Yes, 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 yes. Don't miscount the cost. Yes. I promise you God's worth it. Yes. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world mm -hmm. and lose his own soul? Is it So basically, is it worth you losing your own soul for the cost of gaining the world? No, it's not. Because even if you gain this world, you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. That soul is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if it's riches and, and, and whatever that you want, read Revelations. It tells you what heaven looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you. If I'm, you I'm do things saying, God, if you do things God way, he'll give you stuff here. Yeah. He'll take yeah. care of you here. Yeah. And the, the things you're thinking you're gonna lose are things that are giving you trouble anyway. They're the source of even what Biggie I'm gonna quote Prophet Biggie Small. <laughs> He said, more money, more, more problems. problems. And he, that's him saying, look, this man was everything. And he said that. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're chasing in this world, whatever cost you're paying to get it, it's not worth it. Assign that cost to Christ because he is eternally worth it. Yeah. I hope you've been blessed. Mm -hmm. I hope something, one thing, sentence we said yeah. touched you and helped you to assign the right worth to your soul and to a relationship with Christ. Be blessed. Hopefully we'll see you back here on Inspire Higher again. My name is Leo. And Shani Press. I want to say one more thing. These Bible studies are meant to help you find out who you are in Christ and to make sure that you assign yourself a place in heaven because we want, we're trying our best to live there and we would like for everyone to go there. So, Amen. Inspire higher. We see y'all next time. Remember, like, share, subscribe, leave questions, comments. And we we'll see you next time here on Inspire Higher Bible Study. Be blessed.